Hey y'all, today we're looking for postponed crappie. It's the 1st of May. Stay with me. All right, y'all. It's the 1st of May, and then in this part of Texas, we've got several different patterns going on right now. We got several different stages of the fish. We've got um, pre-spawn still, and we have post-spawn, which I'm going to target today, mostly. And then we have uh, spawning fish, all at the same time. And um, a lot of times, what I found is they'll all be in the same area. They, all three stages will be in the same area, so you can really find some large groups of fish because they'll all be together. Uh, all three of those at the same time and you can go catch them shallow if you want to and you can um, You can uh, Go catch them in standing timber if you want to But I'm going to get out here off of some brush out here in 16 feet After I get this little horsey head rigged up Look at here. I want to show you real fast while I'm doing this look at all the fish that are over this brush pile right here as you can see them there's plenty plenty down there if i can't catch one out of there i'm in trouble well i'm gonna get this little uh small it's a uh let's see i think these are uh 30 seconds ounce either 30 seconds or 16th one of the two get me a little body on here i like this little spinner on them give it a little more flash slow it down to also slows the fall down a little bit and we're going to stay off of them you use a live scope to to see them but we're going to stay off of them and cast at them and hopefully they're going to bite a lot of boat traffic out today overcast i would prefer it to be sunny but you can't always get what you want Y'all like my little tackle box? Okay, we rigged up. All right, so I'm I'm about 20. Well, it looks like I'm about 15 foot from the edge of where the fish start. And I'm gonna cast this thing out there and let it pendulum down through those fish and see if I can't snag a few of them. Like I say, I'm gonna stay, stay off of them instead of getting on top of them. Oh, there's one first cast, baby. First cast. You can't catch them every cast if you don't catch one on your first cast. That's what I learned a long time ago. Hey, good keeper, black crappie too, boy. Shoot, man, that's a good one right there. Uh oh, gotta get my forceps out on him here. There we go. First one on the uh, little horsey head. A little chartreuse body on it. That's one. Now see, if you got up on top of them, yes, you're gonna catch some. But if you stay away like this, and you cast into them, you're gonna catch a whole lot more. And I tell you what, that one was really aggressive. He hit it hard. There's another one, second cast. Second cast. You see, we got boats trying to run over us and we don't care. Another keeper. Another keeper on that little horsey head. And thank you, George, for the horsey heads, buddy. As you can see, they're working fine. Made two casts with them, two fish. Boy, you can't beat that. Let's see if we can get a third one here. Those boats kind of drifted me back a little bit. Oh, well, he was there. Doggone it, I didn't get him. 
I had a bow in my line. There he is. Third cast. Third cast. We got us another one. Oh, look at here. It's a dang white yellow bass. But this is still a fish, though. We'll still count him as a fish on three casts. Shoot, you can't beat that. I'm not choosy. I catch them all. And I don't know how many of you guys know it. Those right there are some fine eating, buddy. You can mix them in with your crappies and you'll never know. But look at here. He's got uh, sperm coming out of him. So these fish are spawning out here in this deeper water. Even the, the yellow bass are. Okay, let's see. We'll make forecasts and see how forecasts do. I'm going to tell you right now. May and June in this area where I live in is probably the two best times of the year to fish. Two best months for just catching overall numbers, good quality. We like to get run over out here with all these bass fishermen out here. I must not have thrown it in the right spot that time. Oh, I did too, Dad Gummy lost him. Shoot! I missed him again. After it got underneath the boat here. I hit it again. That must be them yellow bass, reckon. I drifted back somehow. Those boats came in here and kind of shifted me back. I think I didn't get my cast right. Okay, let's see. Here we go, right out here. I'm just letting that thing fall. Just It's just pendulum. Pendulum's down back to the boat. And typically I'm getting a bite before it gets down through there. Oh, well, one had it right then. I'm getting a bite before it gets down in there to the, uh, to the cover. I keep getting little bites. I think we got some bluegill in there with them. One thing is you'll find out also uh, when you, if you have a live scope and you're just now getting used to using it, you'll pull those fish off of that cover. So, you know, I know if you're, you've been out and you've done it before, you get on a brush pile and you'll catch one or two and then, or three or four, and then they'll quit biting on you and you think, well, they just stop biting. Well, with live scope, you'll be able to see that a lot of times they won't quit biting. They'll just pull off. You'll pull them off of that cover. When you catch one or two or three, the others will start following it and come off away from it. And sometimes they'll get to where they're just right underneath your boat. And you can just fish straight down. That's one of the best things about having this live scope, actually, for me, is that you can always see where the fish are to know which way you need to cast. There's another one. So I had to make five casts and caught four. Another good one too. Another good keeper. Black crappie. Nice one. And we almost getting run over. I mean, it's like a highway out here. These people are nuts over these dang bass. I tell you what. Not only do they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of boat, they spend that much in gasoline chasing them too. And the big portion of that school that we were looking at when I pulled up here has backed off and went further that direction. They're on the opposite side of the cover from me now. That's where when we first got here, they were on this side. Look, there's one. Oh, he got off. But that's the benefit of having this live scope because you can tell that and see where they are in relation to the cover. And you know, you can keep keep your bait in the strike zone, man, as much as possible. I get a bite every cast. I just ain't hooking up with them. Some of those may be bluegill. Some of them may be those yellow bass. There's a golly bum. Shoot. Boy, they're coming right under the boat to get it. 
there's some giant bluegill get out on these brush piles too and they love minnows it's the craziest thing let's go right out that way I think I see a big largemouth down in there too. I'll catch him too if he wants to bite. We got uh, 65 degree water temperature. There's one. Oh, he got off. Dang, gum it. They're hitting so light, some of them I can't feel them, and they're just kind of heavy. And then you'll end up losing them. There, he got it back. Hey, that's pulling pretty good there. Strong black crappie. Look at that. Just barely got him in the top. And even though I've got that little six pound line and that little noodle rod, look at it. It's still got a little hole in there where it just come right out. That's why you got to be so gentle. Just gentle with them. You can lose them. If they're not eating the bait good way down in their throat, if you hit them too hard or got too heavy a pole or too... Uh-oh. Or too, um, too strong a line, too heavy a line, you'll rip a hole in them and you're liable to lose them if you're not careful. We've got a lot of new people out on the lake today because they're running in areas where they don't know where they're supposed to be running. There's another fish. I mean, it's just cast after cast after cast. Look at there's a white crappie mixed in with those blacks down there. He's not a keeper, but... Boy, he was lonely too. He's not as big as my pliers. I guess I would have to say that I probably catch my limit faster in May and June than any other time of the year. Except for maybe sometimes when they get on the spawn. I, I, but that spawn deal is just so inconsistent. One day they're up there real good, the next day they're not. But this, once this gets going, this is consistent, man, and it's every day. I'll show y'all real quick. This, these fish have, this is busted up. Remember how thick it was when we began here just a few minutes ago? Now a bunch of them have moved, have moved over here to the back side of the cover. They've pushed off over here. Oh, I got a fish on there. I'm dagging them talking. He's not very big. Oh, he come loose. Shoot. Yeah, they backed off that other side. And I think some of it might be is because I see a big bass swimming around down in there. And I bet you he's busting them up too. Down there trying to eat some of them. We've got a east, southeast type wind today. And it's keeping me positioned a little different than I like to position on this particular area here. There he is. There he comes. I seen another big bass. There's two of them down in there. Oh, that's strong, man. Golly. That's a good one right there. Good white, good black one right there. Look at that. See that, though? Barely. Look at that skin. Oh, it just come off when the weight of it. Just barely skin hooked. They're just barely hitting it. Now, there's several different areas cover you know different types of structure you can find them on right now you can if you like to fish in deep water i caught them two days ago in 28 feet so you can do that you can fish bridge pilings you can fish stumps trees brush piles the brush piles get so easy like I say, the fish just stack up on top of them. Then the bridge fishing gets easy also. And they'll just stack up on them bridge pilings and they'll stack up on these, these brush piles. And there's just so many of them down there. There's got to be several hundred in this group right here. Here's a good shot of it. Now you can see them. There's got to be several hundred of them down in there. So even a guy like me can catch them when there's that many. And that's what I'm always looking for is large groups of fish because, you know, I've always got customers and I need to get them on fish. And it's always easier if there's more fish down there to compete for the bait. There's another one right there. Always little, he come off to. It's always easier when there's more fish to compete for the bait 
than it is just to fish for individual fish, in my opinion. You know, everybody's got their own opinion. Everybody likes to do it their own way. But to me, if I can find 50 or 100 or 1,000, I've got another school that's probably got 1,000 in it. And I know that sounds like an exaggeration, but it's not. <laughs> it's unbelievable how many fish are in it. But if you can find a bunch of them like that together, you, you can catch them a whole lot faster. Everybody can catch them. They don't have to be expert fishermen to be able to catch them. There's another one. Every cast nearly, I mean, I can't say every cast because I was a one or two of them I hadn't caught one, so. And that, and see, he just come up from up underneath it. Look at that. I, I just got it up underneath his jaw. He come over and looked at it close, boy, and I snatched him. I pulled them a little closer to us. There's still a couple big bass down in there though. One of them snatches it, he'll pull all my string off his little pole. Now right now, I'm not even counting down or nothing. You know, there's just so many fish down there, I'm just throwing it out there and just kind of waiting until one gets it. That's not really counting down and keeping it at a particular depth or anything. Oh, I miss one every time it gets down there. I can't see my bait on this live scope. I'm not looking for it. Uh, I say I can't. I could. I could turn this thing and 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 get it to where I could see it. Oh, there, well, he let go. But I'm not. I'm just throwing it out there and letting it pendulum down through the fish. And one gets on it, I really mean. It's pretty simple. And the main thing is, I'm trying to watch out for these boats out here so they don't run over me. I don't know about where you guys live, but we live here on this lake. There's some disrespectful people out here. You can bet on that. It's a Saturday. Like I said, it's the 1st of May. So I normally, I try not to fish Saturdays if I can help it. The people I was supposed to fish today thought that this was terrible weather and they didn't want to fish. So I decided I better come out here and get something for you guys anyhow. Oh, lost that one. Another one. I think some of them is bluegill. I'd like to catch one and show you. See them fighting over the bait right there? That's got to be bluegill. Look how many there are. And they're just run up there and all crazy after it. If I had crickets or a worm, I could sit it in there. Boy, they'd tear it to pieces. Yeah, them dang bluegills is eating me up. That's, that's all bluegill right there. And they're after my jig. I guess most of them's too little to get it or something. Let's see how they'll get in a real tight, a real tight group like that. Most of the time, the crappie aren't as tightly grouped. They'll be, they'll be in a group, but they'll be spread out more so than what those are. There's something right there. A little yellow bass again. Now I'm telling you, if a guy wanted to just get him a mess of fish to eat and didn't, you know, had a, had a bunch of people coming over and wanted to fish fry, these little dudes right here are, I'm talking about some kind of fine, and you can keep all you want, no size limit. And they are good. There's a big old bass, a couple big old bass that's pulled into there. And since they came in there, those fish have settled down. They're not, they're not near as aggressive as they were when I first got here. And sometimes when you start catching a bunch of fish like that, it'll get those bass aggressive. And they'll start, you know, running in there and busting up the schools. And that's what's kind of happened. And uh, it's kind of slowed down. So I think I'm going to move to another place. See if I can't find another school of them somewhere. Maybe there's not a big bass around them. I'm going to ease to another spot. All right, y'all. I moved to another place. And look at the fish down there. You think they ain't a bunch of crappie right there? It's a little bit deeper. 23.3 feet. Fish are about 20 to 25 right over there. We're going to set off of them, make a cast to them. Let that bait fall down and see how far it can get through there before one eats it. It's going to take it a little longer to get down in there. 
Oh, one got it. It didn't take it long, though. It didn't take it long <clears throat> to get one. Nice black crappie. Hey, be still. Another good one. It didn't take long. First cast. <laughs> oh, shoot. First cast into him, buddy, and you, you get him. And there he goes. He's going back down, too. He went back down in that group of fish to tell the rest of them, hey, don't bite that pink chartreuse jig, buddy. It'll snatch you out of the lake. Hopefully, he tells them, hey, that guy on the other end of it's a nice fellow, though. He'll let you go. A lot of times, you there's one right there. It's a bit slowly come off. I was going to say, a lot of times, you know, you just I'll just watch my line because you'll see them fish hit it. You'll never feel the bite, and you'll just barely see that line twitch. Like that right there. He's not very big. But that's it. You know, I just saw that line twitch. Just watch it lay out there. Hey, and I want to say something just real quick about these forceps. I'm telling you what, these are great. I love these things. And I'll tell you, I've got a link for them down in the description of the video. And anything, any proceeds from these forceps goes to help fund me getting out of here and showing you guys some good content and trying to teach you the things that I know about crappie fishing. So if you do purchase anything, any of these, man, I'd greatly appreciate it and it'll it'll help me keep going and bringing you some good stuff hopefully and good good content to watch so anyway that little jig is so light that any amount of wind can keep you from feeling feeling the bite but you look at that line and just see right where it goes into the water out there and you can notice just any little twitch or if it uh, stops falling you know if you know how deep the water is and you know how long it takes to get down to the bottom oh one hit it I got him oh he come loose again I tell you what they're they're not being too aggressive on it today I don't know um, I'm catching a lot of fish don't get me wrong but I might catch more if I was to put a different color on I may just I may just do that just to see. But I'm gonna try this one a few more times anyway. You know, when you find these schools of fish like this, there's one, I saw that line twitch. When you find these schools of fish like this, you know, you don't. your casting doesn't have to be as accurate because there's so many and the school's so big that you don't have to get in a specific spot, you know. And that's what's great about it, and that's what's great about this time of year. You can just get, kind of throw in the general direction, and there's so many of them down there, and one of them's going to get it. And they're fighting over it and competing for it, you know, so if you miss one, man, there's going to be another one get it in a second. There's another one. Another thing that's real helpful too is when you're casting out there and, and you figure out how far away from the boat you need to cast, just make your cast. Ooh, that's a good black one right there, buddy. Just make your cast. Oh, he's barely hung. He might come loose. Come here, you. Yeah, that's a good one there. Just make your cast right to that same specific spot every time and then it'll fall down in the same place every time that's a nice one there buddy got good colors on him don't he just let him go yeah that way it'll pendulum down right in the same place every time you make too far a cast you know you may not get it in the same spot and a lot of times those fish these crappie like to feed up so if one something's falling down in there, 
to it, they'll hit it a whole lot better than if it's underneath them coming up through them. Watch that line go down. Let's see. There's another one, boy. They just snatch it. Boy, you just can't get it out there without catching them. Get them and get them and get them. This time of year, you don't even have to fish very long if you don't want to. If you just want to catch a mess to take home. You know, I hadn't even been out here an hour yet. Golly, bum boy, knocked the fire out of it and I missed him. Oh, and another one come got it. You miss one and another one gets it. Another nice one too. Ooh, he got the funk on him. You, Yucko. Man. Boy, I wish one of y'all was here so y'all could touch that and take that off for me. Golly. Ooh, he's funky. Where in the world am I going to get him at? Oh, hey. I don't know what's happened to him, but I wouldn't want to eat that one. Yeah, he's got the funk on him. Huh. Okay, we got rid of that one. We don't want no more like that. Golly bum boy. I wish I had a zoom lens so you could see that line jump when those rascals hit it. There's another one. Dang, these suckers are pulling, boy. They're strong. These, those black crappies, man, they, they just strong. I mean, they, oh, God, shoot, that jig hit me on the finger. Dang it. <clears throat> they are just strong. No matter what size they are. I got him that time. Well, another yellow bass in there with them. There's that one. He got it. Another good one. Another good man. I'm telling you what, this lake is just full of them black crappie, and they're aggressive little rascals too. Oh, golly, well, that's a good one right there. Gosh, man, some of them really smack it. Nice black crappie. Golly, oh, look at there. fish on me. Boy, he's good. Well, I've been out here about an hour and I've accomplished what I wanted to. I found some large schools of fish for my customers for this upcoming week and uh, I just wanted to show you guys how I do that and so just start looking out of way, you know, that start looking in the deeper water now, start looking in, you know, 10 to 15, 20 feet, 25 feet. I, like I said, I caught some in uh, 28 feet a few days ago. So start looking in those areas and uh, stay off of them. You know, stay off of them and make cast to them. You're gonna do a whole lot better that way. Um, if you're, uh, say you don't have live scope and you just got 2D sonar, do the same thing. You know, just, just graph over them, throw your buoy marker out uh, upwind up of the, the, the brush pile that you're fishing and make sure that it's not going to blow back into it. Throw it upwind of it and mark your spot and then back off of it and cast to it. Uh, you're going to catch a whole lot more fish than when you do if you just get up on top of it and fish straight down. I appreciate you joining me. We'll see you on the next one.